everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to try to answer that age-old question, does size matter in ship weapon loadouts, of course, in Distant World 2. So this came about because uh, I had a comment on one of my videos and someone had uh, critiqued my uh, loadout for weapons in my destroyers. And uh, they were saying uh, quite adamantly that it's better to not have empty weapon bays. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go to our design screen. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, my destroyer, let's sort. But by the way, if I haven't, I did cover this in my other video. Make sure you always sort by state ships, makes your life a whole lot easier. And uh, yeah, actually going to do a copy as new. Okay, so we're going to add a new one. So I think these are fleet destroyers that I've been using. And basically what happened is I would come along here. I'm going to keep my Sentinel beam. I like this, but I'm going to <clears throat> hold down the mouse here and select large concussion missiles. Okay. And uh, one there and one here. Uh, and there's a discussion about where to put them. So I put one at the left side and one on the right side um, versus the front and versus the back. Uh, I like them balanced like that. But that's a whole nother discussion for another video, but what which I plan on doing on all components and, and building ships again. So I'm a little more detailed uh, video about this design screen and, and designing some carriers and battleships and and making different uh, different ships for different tasks. So I'm gonna build a video around that. But for now, what I'm trying to show you is that there are two empty bays, right? I have my PD here. Now, by the way, a normal loadout, I have a Fight, Starfighter Bay, I have some sensors here. Actually, I don't usually use short range sensors. Um, in fact, the I'll show you the loadouts that I'm gonna use for the test. I don't use a short range sensor here, but regardless, that's not the point. The point is that one of the viewers was claiming that having two large missiles is not nearly as good as, and I'll open up the actual design that I made, so let me just get out of this, as this, right? as filling the empty bays with mediums and small. Now, of course, if I have too large, there's no room left um, to put anything else. But if I remove the large, replace them with two mediums, I can fit a small and a medium. I tried a couple of other combinations, but this was the one that gave me the most uh, number of weapons or, or really most number of damage, uh, total damage points. And you can see it's almost filling the hull here. It's 588 out of 60, 600. Uh, so I made this layout here and I did, you see, I replaced the scanner here with the trace scanner. So I made this, everything's the same on the two types of ships, except this one has smaller weapons, right? It's filled every bay and this is allegedly more effective, right? That's what the claim is. So we're going to run a test. We'll run two, I think we'll run two battles each against a pirate base and some pirate ships. And we'll see who, you know, destroys the base quicker and also if they destroy the base at all and how they survive the battle, right? How many how many damaged ships on each side? So basically, is it significantly more effective to have four small weapons or medium and small weapons here rather than just two large missiles? And that's what we're gonna do to run the test. So let's take a look at the test and let's see what happens. Okay, we're ready for our matchup. So I've got two fleets of 10 ships each. Uh, the fleet on the left, as I'll show you in the design, is with the two large missiles and uh, as mentioned earlier, the PD, the Starfighter Bay, and the uh, Trace Scanner. We've got two shields and armor. So the, everything's the same on both ships, except I've used smaller weapons on the other group. So let's take a look at the other group. And as I mentioned, I tried to fit as many as I could uh, in here. I tried to actually do a large and some mediums, but it wouldn't work out. So I did three mediums and one small was the best quality I could get. Um, by using all of the bays. And of course, with the restriction of my 600 uh, hull size here. Okay, I think these are fleet destroyers, uh, but they're both the same uh, hull. So they're both working with the same uh, stats all around. So everything except for the weapons, that's the only difference here. So let's see what happens. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, we're out, slightly out of range. Actually, we're just in range. Okay, so it'll be a little disadvantage here. Uh, in fact, I'll move them back. All right, let's move them back a little bit. Actually, I'm going to warp these out. So now that you've seen them, I'm going to get them out of here. Otherwise, the uh, their ship, their 
ships will attack us, so we don't want that. And I'll move these guys back just so they're just out of range of the base. I don't know what kind of difference that's going to make. I mean, if you warp in, you're not going to be... Now, this I picked this pirate base because I have a contract with them, so it's going to be uh, easy to turn it on all at once. But, you know, if you're coming in without a contract... Um, they would attack you immediately. So, you know, you might warp in maybe a position here. So let's see what happens. I think, yeah, I just want to be at maximum range. Okay, they're all turned around. They're ready to go. All right, let's see what happens. So I'm going to break the contract. Oh, by the way, one other thing to talk about is for my fleet here is the uh, tactic setting. So it's set for nearby. This is important. Attack stance is cautious. And I use the fleet tactics instead of ships. So I overrode the individual ships because I wanted them to be cautious as well. So they're going to try to keep their, it was not going to work, of course, as I've discussed with you for a long time, but they're going to attempt to keep their distance so they can use their missile advantage uh, at long range. And I put retreat to never, so it's a fight to the death. This way we can see and compare the results. I mean, they may be both lose. There's a lot of ships here, but we'll see how, who loses uh, worse if that happens. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so uh, cancel the contract. Okay, it's done. And then I'm going to let the game go. I'm going to move it at uh, times one at first, and then we'll speed it up a little bit if it gets bogged down. Let's see what happens. Uh, they are within range of the base, so they're going to be hit immediately. Um, okay. Here we go. All right, we're going to launch our fighters. They're going to launch their fighters. Ship's going to probably warp to... Uh, actually, maybe not warp to me. Okay, they're going to head over here. You can see we're going to get the first volley, right? Although they're, some of their lead ships are firing, or the base is firing, I think. So we got a nice little advantage there. And now we're going to turn. Our ships are turning to keep range. This is because I said cautious. So they're trying to keep their distance. They're not going to be able to keep the distance long, but they'll give a little more time advantage. And probably move themselves out of range of the base, too. Let's see. Uh, not quite, no. All right, so they're doing damage. I don't know that they've actually killed anybody. They may have killed some fighters. Nope, eight and eight still. Okay. This ship looks pretty bad. No. No, no one's really taking too much damage yet. Okay, that one has. All right, my fleet is splitting up. I'm not going to control anything. I'm just looking. Uh, looks like we're okay. Some shield damage on some of my ships. All right, let's speed it up and see what happens. Yeah, see, in an attempt to keep their distance, they split up, and that's probably going to doom those three ships up top here. This guy's getting pursued by three guys. Yep. They may also capture one, which would be interesting. And now the base is uh, contributing some weapon damage here. Oh, we've disabled one, looks like. Yep. And that guy's definitely disabled on ours, so we definitely got no ship. These two are getting pursued. They're going to get wiped out. But these guys are holding their own, it looks like. Although, yeah, they took the base out. Okay, great. All right, so mission accomplished. Let's see what they end up uh, surviving with. Looks like. And uh, the problem is, right, I think we may get some ships as soon as they... Yeah, it looks like we obtained some ships as soon as we destroyed the... Uh, Base. Yep, so that's going to help us out a lot too. So anyway, that we survived it with, uh, I think we have one disabled here. Yeah, he's definitely disabled. The rest look okay. So we didn't really lose a ship there. That's 10 ships. Didn't really lose a ship, so we did pretty well. Okay, and we took out the base um, with one disabled. That's not bad. Of course, I picked up some more. At this point, it's not really worth watching because we picked up some extra ships from the pirate, as often happens. So we're going to pause this. Uh, we'll take a break and then we're going to um, look at the other ships with the smaller weapons to see if they fare as well or worse. All right, so now we're going to see how the medium and small uh, weapons do. Again, all with all of the bays filled rather than in or in contrast to my uh, my design, which was two large uh, missile weapons and, and, and I think uh, two free bays there, so two empty bays. So let's see if... The smaller but more filled base is the better option. 
They're at the same range as the other ships. They were just inside of this uh, yellow outer range here. So they were just in coming range of the space station. It's exactly where I put the other ones. Um, I'm going to break the... Uh, and again, just to double check, I want to make sure their fleet settings are all the same. Yeah, they're all the same as they were. So uh, I'm going to break the uh, agreement again. Okay, the agreement's broken, so now we're in a state of war. And I'm going to just let them come in and see what happens. I'm not going to move a ship. I'm just going to, same exact scenario, let it all happen. We're going to go down to speed one for the initial combat, and then let's see what happens. Okay. Just like before, they're launching fighters. The other ships are heading towards us. Uh, now, there's less of a range advantage here because there's no large weapons, which have larger range. The medium and small weapons have um, small, you know, medium has a smaller range, and then the smaller is even smaller range, you can see. They're just going to come into range now. All right, so they're definitely going to be at some disadvantage for that, but we knew that, but we're, we're wondering if the number of weapons is going to outperform overall. Maybe because it's going to be more effective at PD. Maybe because uh, there's more total missiles. All right, let's see what happens. So they're all keeping their distance except this ship. I'm not sure why, but at least they're not into three. They have four there, and at least they're not getting cut off by the other ship. So it's working out a little differently, but they're getting their shots off. This is good. Yeah, a nice advantage over here. And these guys are five on three or four on, yeah, five on three there. That's helpful. All right, let's see, are we taking damage at all? We'll see shield damage so far. Yep, this guy's just about to be disabled. This guy's really bad. We're doing okay so far. Uh, all the fighters are still there. Yeah, they have all their fighters and bombers. Oh, this guy's uh, damaged. He's trying to get repaired, but he's out of the battle for a bit. That's pretty good. Right, let's see how much it's repairing here. Um, it's okay. Taking damage. Oh, that guy's hurting. Yeah, we expected that. He kind of got separated from the group. Yeah, I don't know what the logic is behind that, the game logic that does that. But, okay, we're, we're still holding our own here. Okay. Now they're a little more spread apart. These two are going, looks like, for the base early. I don't think that happened in the other, the other run through. Let's see, they're getting pretty spread apart. But it looks like they were forming well. Hard to tell. Yep, everybody's still got 100% health, from what I can see. Uh, let's see if the base is, yeah, the base is taking some damage. I don't know if the two of these guys can take it down. They might. They're getting close. Damn it. Oh, he's doing fine. He's hurt. They might get it. Wow. I'm running it a little faster here. Oh, I don't know who went down there. Yep, we lost a ship. They're done a nine. This guy's pretty hurt. She's being boarded. The boarding screen looks like. Oh, looks like they're going to take him too. Yep, they captured him. Okay. So now we lost another one. And the pirate base is still there. Okay. Yeah, not going so good for the uh, smaller weapon ships. I think what we'll do is we'll do a, uh, a second run where... I come in full range of the base and kind of a surprise attack and see how they do there, uh, both ships. So that would negate the range advantage of the other fleet. Uh, well, maybe we'll keep them at the, their maximum ranges, right? So they'll, well, this fleet will be a little closer. Yeah, they're they're losing here. They're uh, definitely losing, and the pirate base survived. It was almost down to armor. Its shields were almost down. But, you know, the captured ship didn't help either. It's happening. Down to five. I think we can... I think we can call this as a... Definitely not as effective. 
Uh, and and it could be the range had a factor in that. I'm, I'm sure it did. Um, and I, you know, I'm not going to evaluate all the hits and everything, but you know, you, you were hoping maybe that their PD would be a little better. They've got a lot of smaller missiles and they can take the fighters out. But actually, the fighters are unscathed here. Eight bombers and eight interceptors still. So they're unscathed. And uh, yeah, I'm going to call this a definite defeat for the smaller ships. We don't really need to run it much longer. Oh, they're down to three. Yeah, it's pretty much over. Okay, so I think that settles the uh, the missile case. Let's try two other weapons. Again, the same uh, things. We'll try the uh, large versions and then the small versions that fill all the bays for both types of weapons, and let's see how they fare. All right, let's take a look at uh, rail guns. And let's see how they differ with large weapons versus small. So you can see in this design here, I've got two large heavy rail guns, which do 84 damage each. And that's going to make a big difference in this comparison because every weapon has to go through the shields and get reduced by the shield resistance. And then when it hits the armor, go through the armor damage reduction from the reactive rating. Larger weapons are only going to have to do that math twice. They're only going to get reduced for each weapon. But when you have smaller weapons doing it, each of the smaller weapons, which are less damage in this case, not like missiles, missiles were all the same damage, large and small. But in this case, the rail guns that you're seeing firing here are large and therefore there's only two of them per ship and they're only having to get reduced by damage twice. But in the next one you see, and I'll mention it again in the summary and show you the math, they're getting uh, reduced for every weapon, and if there's four of those weapons, that means twice as often the damage is getting reduced. And I think that's going to make a huge difference. And let's take a look. So, um, yeah, they're doing fine so far. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll click on the whole fleet and we'll take a look. And uh, I also want to see, uh, by the way, they came in because they're freshly built, by the way, they don't have fighters. So if you look, if you notice that, if you go back a few seconds, you'll see. There's no fighters for these ships because I didn't give them time to build the fighters. So when you kind of warp these ships in from uh, nowhere, because I'm using the editor to create them, they didn't have time to build fighters. So we're going in without fighters. So the star, the uh, the, star, the pirate base itself has fighters, of course, but the in, my individual ships don't. They do have uh, the uh, PD weapons, so they are defending themselves against fighters somewhat. But they would have been a little more effective with the fighters. But regardless, it's the same for both fleets no advantage here uh, when we try the small one. Okay, so they're doing really well in the pirate base, really quickly actually. By the way, you can see that, um, yeah, you can see the uh, pass-through here doing damage, right? And I'm going to talk about that more when we get to torpedoes, because it's a little more obvious. Uh, so some of the, some of the uh, uh, concepts I describe in my combat video and also my PD video and the calculations all apply here, and you can actually see them in work, particularly with the bigger weapons. All right, so it looks like we handily took care of these guys. We have some damage here. I don't know if I need disabled ships, but I certainly have. Okay, they're gone. And now the battle's over because we captured some of their ships just like before. But yeah, there's a damaged ship there, 83%. Um, but basically, this fleet's intact. I mean, I don't think we even lost a ship, so it looks good. Yep, that's a heavily damaged ship there. But um, I think everything else looks good. Oh, yeah, there was an 83% over here. So maybe two damaged ships, all right? So pretty successful. I'm going to stop the video, and we're going to go to the smaller versions, which are more numerous, but smaller. Let's see how they fare. Okay, let's take a look at the second design. And in this design, we put two mediums and two small rail guns, so that, again... Uh, we would fill all the bays, as was the uh, the comparison here, to see if that makes a difference, if that helps us or not. So, uh, if we look at the 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 size is about the same. So the number the hole size that we filled is about the same as two large. So we have two mediums, two smalls. And if we look at the stats here, I'll put the numbers up in a second. You'll see that um, they do less damage, but they shoot more often, right? So if you look at the chart here. Um, the mediums have two volleys. They do 13 damage each, and there's two of those guns, right? So that's going to be 52. And then the small guns <clears throat> are going to do 13 each with one shot, but there's two guns of those. So it's 78 total damage. If you look at the top, I'm comparing it to the other one. 
uh, from before, but that one only shoots about every 11 seconds, and this one shoots about 2.5 seconds. That's taking into consideration the uh, the volley, the, sh- the time between volleys, and then the fire rate. So about 2.5 seconds. So you, it's about four times as often as the other one. So in theory, it has more total damage per 11 seconds, right? But here's the problem, right? And I mentioned this earlier. The problem is, and you can, as you watch the battle here, I mean, you won't be able to tell, but if you watch the battle here, um, what's happening is there are more weapons firing for less damage. And each one of those weapons, when they hit the shield, they have to lose a point or two, depending on the technology for shield resistance. And then the ones that get through to the armor, um, or when there's no shield left and they're shooting an armor, they also have to lose um, the armor damage resistance. So every and they don't have that much damage to begin with. So that loss is a higher percentage of their total damage versus the two large guns, right? Which pay the same price, but they only pay it twice instead of four times. And it's a very small percentage of their uh, total. So any, any bypass damage, for example, will do a lot more damage and won't get mostly removed by the resistance. So anyway, uh, I think that's going to make the big difference here, even though in theory, the smaller and medium weapons are going to do more total damage every 11 seconds. They are going to be less effective. And let's see how that plays out. In fact, I'm looking at this now. You can see that, uh, yep, one ship is pretty damaged here. Yep, that ship's disabled, actually. And they're not getting any shots off in the pirate base. Yeah, that ship's disabled. Uh, not disabled, but uh, seriously damaged, too. And they're all taking shield damage, and the base is unscathed at this point. So, so far they're struggling. Uh, and I think by this time, actually, I'm looking at the time between the two clips. By this time, I think the other ships were attacking the base and maybe even have destroyed it by now. Wow, so you can see a bunch of ships here are either disabled or struggling. We lost one completely, and there's a bunch of disabled or seriously damaged here now. Uh, they're not getting any closer to the base. So I think we're going to call it pretty soon. Yeah, that's some serious damage here. Look at that. 85, 62, 50 something. Yep. Uh, did we lose another one? I think we did. Yeah. So this is this is pretty much over. It looks they're not even getting close to the pirate base. The pirate base is at full health. So I think we're going to call this as a definite disadvantage. And I believe it's for the reasons that I shared with you uh, about more weapons taking more damage reduction. Okay. Let's try uh, the last weapon we're going to try is torpedo. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so now we're going to compare uh, a design with two medium torpedoes. Now, notice I didn't fill the hole size in the upper right here. That's okay. But we're going to use two medium torpedoes, which have two shots per volley. But other than that, they're identical to the small torpedoes. So we're going to be we're going to be using testing here two medium torpedoes, and then on the next round, the last round we're going to do is four small torpedoes. So they have the same range, same damage, same volley rate, except that the mediums shoot two volleys, or two shots per volley, versus one shot. So it's actually going to be dead even as far as the stats go, with maybe a slight advantage potentially for the smaller ones, because if there's four of them, they can target, when they're acting as PDs, for example, against uh, fighters or other weapons, they can, seeking weapons, they can act individually maybe and... Uh, hit more uh, things when they're acting as PD, possibly, possibly. All right, by the way, I want to show you something interesting here. So take a look. We haven't penetrated the shields, but look at the damage to the components, right? That's armor bypass, which is really great. Um, So uh, I think I showed you earlier shield bypass and working, and this is armor bypass working. It's not even hitting the armor. Some of the shots get through the shields by just the weakness of shields, and then, like right now, it's really bypassing the armor a lot and it's uh, doing a lot of component damage. So that's really, really valuable uh, and effective, particularly the larger the weapon, as we kind of discussed when I was discussing uh, rail guns earlier. Okay, so it's gone. They took it out relatively quickly. Uh, Let's check some damage on them, see how they're doing, how they survived the battle. Uh, I think they're pretty good here. I think I have, yeah, that guy's hurt pretty bad. Okay, but everybody else is probably just shield damage. Oh, he's hurt pretty bad, took some armor damage there. And yeah, other than those two, maybe those three, okay, they're doing okay. So 
yeah, maybe three, three seriously da- or medium damage and one light damage there. Oh, and we lost one actually because there were there were thirteen. There's only twelve now, so we definitely lost a ship. Okay, let's check out the other ones. Okay, and finally, uh, let's check out this design that has, as I mentioned earlier, four small torpedoes. And you'll see it's the same exact size in the hull. And the only big difference here is they only do one shot per volley, but there's four of them. So they're going to do the same damage. Let's see how they perform. Uh, Setting them in the same position, starting position here. Uh, Let's cancel the treaty and let's see what they do in combat. So uh, there's not going to be a range difference. There's not going to be a difference in um, uh, penetration in the sense of they lose from... uh, uh, shield resistance more than the other ones. It's all the same. It's just more weapons with one volley instead of two volleys. So, guessing they're going to do about the same. Let's see if they do any better. We'll check their damage. Uh, the battle's over. Let's, of course, assume that they take out the... Uh, guessing they will. Let's see if they take out the fire base. Okay, they're hitting the fire, fire base. Again, watch this um, armor bypass damage, which means even before the armor is destroyed, they can hit components beyond the armor. Uh... See, yeah, they're already hitting components in here. That's, again, as I mentioned earlier, because some shots do get through the shield without shield bypass. Because uh, these only have, torpedoes only have armor bypass. But when they do get through the shields once in a while, they'll do some damage to components. And it's great when they damage components. If they take out a weapon, that means the, sh- the base is going to shoot less at you, right? So that's the advantage of armor bypass. When they damage components before the armor's even down, they are... They, and if they hit a shield or something else, it can take it down, but they, they can also take down the hangar so they can't rebuild fighters or they take down the weapons. So they're taking it down about the same... I'm looking at the two um, times on the time, timelines of the video. Oh, well, they would have, but now they're, they've got delayed a little bit. But, I mean, that base is pretty much completely destroyed components and disabled. It's not really fighting much anymore, so they can take it out at their leisure, but slightly slower than the other ships. That could just be, you know, a, there's always going to be a small luck of the placement of the ship and where they happen to go. Yeah, they, they took it out. Okay. So I don't think we're going to see a huge damage here. Let's check some damage of the ships here. Oh, okay. There's some seriously da- medium damage, I guess. That's serious damage. Okay. But they still have all 13, so slightly better off than what we saw before. Yep. Another seriously damage there. Medium damage. Yep. Medium damage. Okay. Looks like they have a little more damage Damage ships, yeah, they have a few, maybe two more damage ships, but they didn't lose one. So, I mean, you could, I'd call that a draw, right? I mean, they both did well. They took a little longer to take the base down. They have a few more damage ships, but they didn't lose a ship. So I'm going to call that about a wash, which is exactly what I expected. Um, but bottom line here, right, is there's no major advantage. Okay, let's answer the question finally. Does size matter when it comes to weapon sizes? Uh, so for missiles, yes, it does, right? So two large missiles uh, outperformed the smaller missiles, mostly because of range. The uh, net damage, I believe, was the same for them. Uh, a little, actually, there was a little, there's fewer, fewer number of missiles on the right-hand column, but not by much. Maybe I think it was by four missiles. Um, they were roughly the same, a little bit more missiles to the large missile uh, design uh, uh, configuration, but... Definitely the range helped here. And so the larger missiles far outperformed, replacing them by with smaller and medium versions and filling all the bays. Okay, let's take a look at rail guns. So the, the two medium and two small rail guns here actually did more damage over the same time period. We picked 11 seconds because that's the uh, reload time of the large heavy rail guns. But because of the losses due to uh, shield and armor damage reduction, the large railguns actually better performed. So when they did their bypass damage, they got more damage through and they uh, outperformed the two medium and two smalls by a fair amount. There was a lot less damaged ships and uh, definitely clearly saw a difference in the battle. So we're going to mark this one as going to the large size out uh, performing the two mediums and two smalls. Now let's take a look at torpedoes. So because the torpedoes, because the small and medium torpedoes really don't have any difference other than the, the medium torpedoes shoot 
uh, two shots per volley. We figured we'd get the same results, and we basically did. I mean, in this case, the four smalls performed a little less uh, than the mediums, but uh, I think it was just randomness. I don't think there's any difference here. We thought maybe they'd perform a little bit better when they were shooting as PD, but um, it worked out to be pretty much even. So I'm not surprised. It's really when you go to the large size weapon, and there are larger torpedoes, um, different technologies than Epsilon, but there are larger torpedoes. And I think in that case, it would mirror the other two. But for now, I want to try something a little different. We're going to leave these two as both effective. But the bottom line here, right, is as we discussed in the beginning, the the proposal was that if you use, you, you should always fill the uh, small, the you know, all of the bays with small and medium rather than large and not leave empty bays because it's going to make it better. And the bottom line is it doesn't. It doesn't. In fact, in some cases, it makes it worse. So always go with the larger weapons into the bays that you could fit them in. And that's going to at least break even and probably give you an advantage at some point. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can catch my next video and check out my guide. The link is down below. And as always, good hunting.